For this virtual drag race, we've got the Nissan Pro 4X, so not the Warrior, just the Pro 4X, versus the GWM Canon L twin cab chassis. So it's not completely even, I know, but that's what makes it interesting, I think. The GWM has the aluminium tray on the back, which is going to be a little bit lighter, and it is actually lighter. It's got a curb weight of 2,100 kilograms, versus the Navara, which is pretty much the top spec model, aside from that Warrior, with a curb weight of 2,146. What about the powertrains? Well, the Navara comes with a 2.3 litre twin turbo diesel four cylinder, producing 140 kilowatts and 450 newton meters, while the GWM is left a little bit behind with a two litre turbo diesel four cylinder, producing 120 kilowatts and 400 newton meters. The GWM has an eight speed. It perhaps can divide up the torque a bit better than a seven speed. Um, although I've found that with diesels, you don't really need that many gear ratios because the torque and the sort of widespread of torque or low end torque helps pull through longer gears anyway. Even so, the Navara does have a better power to weight ratio in this comparison. What makes it a little bit more unfair is the fact that the GWM is priced from just under 44,000 drive away, while the Navara is priced from just under 62,000 before on-road costs. So that's a huge price difference between the two and what are basically, they, they perform the same sort of duties. Now, obviously diesel utes like this are not designed for drag racing, but I think it's interesting to compare the difference in acceleration across the quarter mile anyway, and we can see the real world difference. As before, I'm going to set up the tripod on three different spots down the quarter mile here on this private road, including at the very start, I've got markers on the tarmac, so I know exactly where the camera is for each run. These were recorded on two different days, very similar weather in terms of temperature, but it is a bit later in the afternoon today compared with the Navara. Uh, but again, yeah, very similar temperature and sort of wind and everything. There's not much wind today as there wasn't with the Navara as well. So it should be an even comparison in terms of the conditions and the environment. It's just the, the two different models here. Uh, the Navara should win this, but it'll be interesting to see how much it wins by, by the end of the quarter mile down the end. Let's see.
there we have it. As you probably would have guessed, the Navara won that. Not by too much though, but I'm going to show you the V-Box results now, which are probably more important figures. What you saw on camera is just the best at a, a kind of an average good run. But what I usually do uh, with during performance testing, I'll do the video recording first. I'll try and do a good run on, on video for you so to give you a good representation of what it's like under its best sort of performance mode. Uh, but then with the V-Box runs, I'll do a lot more uh, off camera. I don't have to worry about the camera rolling, rolling and things like that. And I can try out the different modes, different takeoff methods, and then get the best result. So the V-Box table coming up shows the absolute best result of both of these models, regardless of kind of what it looked like on camera then. These two are very interesting models. They're kind of underdogs in the Ute market segment. They even fall beneath the Triton and the D-Max, in my opinion, just in terms of, you know, overall uh, ranking. If you, if you ask a bunch of friends and so on, they'll rank these a bit lower than the Hiluxes and the Rangers and even the D-Max and the Triton, just in my opinion. But they're not necessarily like that in terms of capability and certainly not in terms of value. The value winner is easily the GWM, $44,000 drive away for this model. I think it's a pretty good bit of kit for what it's designed for. Uh, it does have some shortcomings. The ride is pretty stiff, but that's okay because you want to be carrying things. If you're buying a ute like this with a tray on the back, chances are you're going to be putting lots of heavy crap in the back there. So you want the suspension to be pretty firm and, and rigid and be able to withstand that. But yeah, some of the, uh, the menu operation of the touchscreen and even the instrument cluster, there's some buttons on the steering wheel that don't work when you're doing certain things. Just a little bit, yeah, a little bit more fine tuning to make it a bit better. But then the Navara is also a good option if you're more into touring and off-roading, not, not necessarily carrying heavy things and towing heavy things. The towing rating and the payload and everything on paper is good, but it does have coil springs at the back, which means, yeah, it's more comfortable than most utes. If you're doing a lot of road tripping with the family and so on, I think the Navara is definitely worth looking at. The touchscreen is its biggest letdown. It's just way too dated for the current market. Uh, but the engine and the performance and everything is pretty good. Uh, in terms of economy, the GWM, despite featuring a very small engine and not much power, the fuel economy is not very good and the emissions output is not very good either. And I know most customers don't care about emissions output, but if you are looking to buy this through a lease or through a company car, sort of fleet sort of setup, I know a lot of fleet companies do restrict the amount of uh, emissions output. So this is rated at 246 grams, which is pretty high for its market segment. For example, the Navara is 213. So it's a big difference. The fuel economy is not very good either. It's rated officially at 9.4, while the Navara is just 8.1. There's a big difference, and you do notice it in the real world too. One thing good about the GWM though, is the engine is pretty small and it's quiet. It cruises along the highway. There's not too much diesel clatter, except in the lower RPM and when you first start it up when it's cold. But when you're cruising along, it's actually pretty quiet. But there you have it, a virtual drag race between the two. I'll have a full review video of both of these models coming up soon, and I'll show you the full V-Box results now in the, in the results table. What would I buy though? Look, if I was looking to go around Australia or do some touring and so on, definitely the Navara. It's got good ride comfort, and it's gonna have better resale than something like this, particularly if I wanna keep it for you know a few years, five or six years or something. But if I was working, just smashing tools in the back and leasing it out even for three years, then yeah, I'd definitely consider a GW GWM Canon L like this one. Thanks for watching.